Hi, welcome back again. Um, in this video, we are actually going to be talking about a reflective tool that we use a lot of. It's called the Jahari window. And so let's take a look and uh, talk a little bit more about how we support each other in our reflective practices. Enjoy. spoke of is, is those adverse childhood experiences, those things that happened to us. We use this Jahari window oftentimes uh, with educators and others to really dive deep into self-reflection. How, how are those things that you just spoke about affecting us if that happened to us, right? Um, I know there's been stuff that have affected me over the life and sometimes how I showed up for, for work, how I showed up for my, my spouse, how I showed up for my children. Um, I've got some blind spots that, that have been, you know, uh, known to others, but not known to me until it's become more apparent. So using self-reflection um, as, as, as a, an amazing awareness tool of how we support others, but how we support ourselves um, in, into that, uh, we, we responding emotionally rather than reacting if we are we know where it's coming from right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. the next and one is how how are we supporting families right and and uh learning how to respond be that emotional response do you want to quickly go over that as we yeah I, and here here's what i want us to remember is that attachments are about relationships and we are here to remind you that everything happens in relationships. And so as we are talking about what it means to show up, be present, connect, and advance relationships through our ability you know, to understand attachment, we wanna practice it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it look like? Does it, does it look like you know, we uh, get into um, fight or flight, do we, um, do we offer sympathy? Do we fix it for people because we just don't have time for them to figure it out? No, that's not what we want to do with families. What we want to do is we want to model <laughs> emotional responsiveness. And here's what it can look like. It can look like us just paying attention, mm -hmm. simply mm -hmm. seeing them, hearing them and recognizing the child or in the case of adult to adult, recognizing the adult, mm -hmm. be responsive, respond to the child in a timely manner. Like you said, Roxana, I, I know you need your diaper changed. I know you're waiting on your bottle. I can hear you. I'm going to get it. Um, if it's adult to adult, how do we communicate to each other and let each other know that, hey, I know you needed that email or that piece. I'm going to have it on your desk within this time period. Yeah. So modeling emotional responsiveness means communicating in an attentive, responsive, consistent way that is accepting and provides comfort to the individual that you are are um, servicing or are responding right. to, and and that has to be unconditional, right? Uh, because sometimes they're not. You're not going to get it back. You're not going to get a response back from a text that you sent to uh, a parent. You're going to get a no show, right? But we we are there unconditionally. I'm going to take that to these buckets, and I know we're we're tight on our time here but it's worth saying, right? We believe that ways of showing up is really being attuned and sensitive to filling up everyone's needs. This, this, these buckets are with what all people need uh, filled up one way or another. Sometimes we're, we're, they're a little bit more depleted. Sometimes our buckets have holes in them um, after a long weekend or a long week, but it's, it's really being aware of filling up their children's buckets, uh, giving them a sense of, and I'm going to say this very distinctly, that it's a sense of, for that person, love, belonging, and appropriate power, right? And love, being, feeling loved, um, being able to receive love. And love looks different, 
doesn't it, Peaches? Love looks Absolutely. different for different people. Sometimes it's gifts of service. Sometimes it's it's words of affirmation. Sometimes it's just spending time with me, right? And so being aware of those, what love really looks like for each individual um, is, is really good attunement. That builds that a, a healthy attachment. Uh, belonging, knowing that that I belong no matter what. I am, like you mentioned, I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm valued. Um, I have a sense of belonging to this family or a parent has a sense of belonging to you as their parent educator or therapist because if, to them, it looks like you're the only one, uh, they're the only uh, family on your caseload, right? They have a strong sense of a belonging so, and then appropriate power. You spoke very um, well of that earlier, what that appropriate power looks like. It's, it's choices in that, for that four-year-old, but it's also um, how, do we, how do we give them a sense of that, that, um, that um, in, in the moment that I, um, I have a part of this relationship, I am a part of this relationship, right? Um, so, leading up to, you know, bottom line, right? Bottom line, every moment is an opportunity to build relationships, build a child's brain, because you're making connections in their brain. You're building their frontal lobe. If they feel secure and safe, they're able to think and problem solve. And you know, they're able to learn their ABCs. They're able to learn new things. But without those relationships and feeling safe and secure, none of no, nothing else happens. So, well, we just want to um, be aware that um, every opportunity there's it, it's a diaper change you talked about earlier. It's 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 a car ride. There's a conversation. Turn off that music. Tell parents to turn off that music. <laughs> Talk to your kids. It's an opportunity. Um, and then, Peaches, I think you've got a beautiful pledge I think you'd like to read to everyone. Yeah, and you know what? Before I do that, you know, thank you all for making it to the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you for listening to us. Again, we just wanted to be able to inspire and encourage and remind us the importance of secure attachment and how it impacts the lives of so many of us. Mm -hmm. And, um, and if we want to change society, if we want to change the way our children are being taught, yeah. then we need to look at how we are showing up, being present, connecting and advancing with others yeah. because everything happens in relationships. And so we, um, we know that there's gonna be mountains uh, to climb. We know that there are gonna be valleys um, for ourselves and for the uh, clients that we service and parents, you know, parenting, if it's your first child or your second or your third, you know, your own mountains and valleys. I don't have to tell you what those are going to look like, but this pledge is a pledge to remind us that no matter what, mm -hmm. I am willing to climb the mountain I am willing to go through the valley. I am willing to do it for the sake of children and families. And what Roxana and I would love is after I um, kind of read this, if you, if you read this pledge and you have placed it in your heart as an absolute, I agree, we're going to give you an opportunity on the next slide to stay connected with us and just, you know, drop us a note and say, hey, Peaches and Roxana, I took the pledge. Thank you so much. Because we want to know that there are some people out there just like us who are willing, you know, to understand that there is no mountain too high, <laughs> valley too low, where we will not reach our families or go find them and rescue them if we have to, right? So this pledge just basically says, I pledge to protect, oh, and then my phone goes off. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I pledge to protect children 
from my anxiety and their own, tell them the truth, however difficult it may be, acknowledge their curiosity, even if I am not able to nourish it, never compare them to their peers, never try to fulfill my dreams through them, I prioritize their happiness over achievements. I trust every child's, and I would say every human being's mm -hmm. yeah. capacity. And so I pledge to follow their lead. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's, that's what we wanna share with you. And if you took that pledge and you take it seriously, um, Roxana, did you I, that other slide? Cause you know, I can't see. I oh. do. Yep. It's up. It's up. <laughs> There's a, a QR code that you can, you know, use to stay connected to us. It's just your basic information name and, and um, email address. And then we offered our own um, email addresses here. Uh, we would love to hear from you wherever you are. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, from St. Louis, Missouri, yes. <laughs> and Loon Institute. Um, yes. We're so, so blessed to be here with you. Even Thank you. you. Bye, Bye, guys. So friends, hopefully you have enjoyed this entire series and we would love to connect with you. So if you would like to know more about the work that we are doing here at Loom Institute or want to connect with us or ask questions, feel free to visit us mm -hmm. at loominstitute.org and um, possibly um, let us know what your interests are and we can do more of series like these on different topics. Yeah, yeah, we would really love to hear from you. So see you later. Bye. Bye.